Welcome everybody to Tech Crash. This is Rob and today I've got a really quick video for you about something that I'm a little bit of a geek about but something that I think will really help improve your iPad productivity and that is keyboard shortcuts. Let's go. If you're not using a hardware keyboard with your iPad already then you really should be. You're missing out on a huge productivity boost. But if you are using a keyboard and you're not using keyboard shortcuts, then you'll probably miss out on even a bigger productivity boost. Now, not all applications have keyboard shortcuts, but most do. And obviously I can't cover most of those shortcuts in this short video, but I will cover the most common global shortcuts that apply across the whole iPad. And I'll cover the most common and most useful shortcuts that you can use in Safari. Let's dive right in. If you only learn one keyboard shortcut, that shortcut should be the Spotlight Search shortcut. Command and Space will bring up the search bar, type in your search criteria. This is going to search applications, it's going to suggest web searches, it will even do some Siri website suggestions. It will search podcasts if you've got them, music if you've got it, photos if you've got it, pretty much any content on your iPad. Once you have the the search completed, you can tap on the screen to see what it is that you want to bring up. So I brought up Spotify here. Now, obviously this is about keyboard shortcuts. We don't always want to have to tap the screen. So can I use the keyboard to navigate those search results? Yes, I can, let's see how. So again, command and space to bring up the search results. I'm gonna type in pod again, and I can now use the arrows to move through the different results. I can use command and the arrows to move through the different sections of results. And if I just want to go into the first result in the first section, so in this case, that will be Spotify in the application section, then I just need to hit Command and Return. This is obviously a huge time saver. So if I wanted to go into, say, Fantastical, which is my calendar app, I just type in Fant, press Command and Enter, and there I go, I've brought up my calendar app. This is great. The home screen is much improved now in iPadOS. Not only do you have denser icon packing, so you can get pretty much every icon that you need on that one screen. You also have the today view, so you can customize the information that you're gonna show on your home screen, which best fits your workflow. So obviously you're gonna to need to get to the home screen quite a bit more than perhaps you had done in the past. Thankfully, there is a keyboard shortcut for that. So here I am in Spotify. If I now hit Command and H, that will bring me back to the home screen, but it doesn't go back to the first page of the home screen automatically. It will go back to whichever page of the home screen I was last on. If I hit Command H again, then it goes back to the first page and I can now see my today view. In the last few releases of iOS, I think the dock has become a much more important part of the iPad workflow. Not only can you pin applications and in fact folders of applications to the dock for easy access, if you're going to use multitasking, then the multitasking workflow is driven from the dock. If you're not familiar with how multitasking works on the iPad, check out my video here for that, but just know that you need to use the dock quite often. So there's a keyboard shortcut for bringing up the dock. Here I am in the podcasts app, and if I now hit Command, Option, and D, this will bring up the dock, and I can do this from any application in my iPad and in iPad OS. That's pretty much all there is for global shortcuts in iPad OS. If you can master just this small set of shortcuts, you'll really improve the speed and the ease with which you can operate your iPad. Let's now take a look at the shortcuts in Safari so you can supercharge your web browsing workflow as well. If you're like me, then your Safari workflow will be mostly about opening tabs, doing searches, closing tabs, maybe switching between tabs. So let's start with the shortcuts that focus on those actions. At any point in Safari, you can hit Command and L to highlight the location bar, and you can type in a web address or search criteria in there and immediately get browsing. So let's type in Garmin and get going. So I've got some search for Garmin here. Now maybe I want to also search for Fitbit. I can do Command L again, highlight the location bar, notice that the search criteria I put in there beforehand is highlighted, so I can just start typing over it and do another search. Now, if I want to search in another tab, I can really easily open another tab, Command and T. If I wanted to force that to be a private tab, I'm actually in privacy mode now, but if I wasn't and wanted to force it to be a private tab, that would be Command, Shift and T. Notice again that when I've opened this tab, the location bar is highlighted and I'm ready to search. So I'm gonna search again for Garmin and maybe we'll open one more tab, Command T, and we'll do a search for Sunto. 
So now I've got three tabs open, maybe I want to switch between them really easy. I can use Command and 1 to go to the first tab, Command and 2 to go to the second tab, Command and 3 to go to the third tab. I'm sure you get the idea. Now maybe if we do another search and bring up Polar, we've got a fourth tab. Now we're starting to get to the point of having a lot of tabs. So maybe I want to go down to just having the Garmin tab. So I could close the Polar tab, Command and W to close a tab. But if you have tons of tabs open, closing every one that you don't want to be present gets a bit frustrating. So if I go to the Garmin tab and I do Command and uh, Option W, then that leaves just the Garmin tab there. It closed all the other tabs that I wasn't using. So maybe I've decided I do want one of these Garmin watches and I'm ready to start browsing. There are a few keyboard shortcuts that can help us when we're browsing. So let's go into the Garmin website and let's scroll down here and let's maybe hit Vivo Move here to get up some kind of product page. We're maybe doing some browsing for a watch that we want. And maybe we've decided we don't want that, so we want to go back. Now, rather than reach for the back arrow, I'm just going to hit Command and Left Bracket to go back in my browser history. If you make a mistake and you want to go forwards, if I actually do want that watch maybe, I can go forwards again, not by reaching for the forwards arrow, by hitting Command and Right Bracket. And that's taken me right forwards in my browsing history. So these are pretty much the only shortcuts you need in Safari to actually navigate about the web. And these are the ones I find myself using daily. But there are a few of the shortcuts that I think if you know them will really make your experience, especially if you're trying to read a lot of content online, will make that experience a lot nicer. So let's start with the shortcut for reader mode. So here I am on the BBC website reading an article about Elon Musk and his test flights for his Starship. And maybe I don't want to have all this BBC clutter. I want to read this in Safari reader mode. If I hit Command Shift R, that brings up reader mode. And I can use the arrow keys to actually navigate up and down. And if I use Command and the arrow, I'll move a little bit faster through that page, which I find to be quite nice. Now, if your eyesight isn't great and you want to zoom in, and this doesn't just work on read and mode, this will work on all pages, you could do the whole pinch and zoom thing, but there is actually a keyboard shortcut for controlling the zoom level. If I press command and plus here, it will zoom in. If I press command and minus, it will zoom out. And if at any point I just want to go back to what the original zoom level was, I can hit command and zero. So I find myself using these Safari and iPad global shortcuts pretty much daily but I'm using obviously many other applications than just Safari. So there are other keyboard shortcuts that I'm using. So let me share with you now what I think is the best keyboard shortcut in all of iPad. And that is how you find out what keyboard shortcuts are available in any application. Let's see how that works. So here I am now in Spark, which is my email application. And if I now just hold down command, then up pops the help window with the keyboard shortcuts for this particular view of Spark. Now, some applications will only have those keyboard shortcuts, but Spark provides different shortcuts for different views. So if I now go into an email and do the same thing, I'll get a different set of keyboard shortcuts. Let's see how that works. If I press on this email here and I press on command, then you'll see that I've got a whole set of different keyboard shortcuts that are specific to this view in the email client. You can do this for any application that you're using. And if you find yourself in an application doing a repetitive action, it's worth just two minutes of your time to hold down the command button and see if there is a keyboard shortcut for that action. That's everything for this video. I hope that you found it interesting and I hope you found it useful. I know that I find keyboard shortcuts to be a hugely useful part of my workflow. Please do hit like, do hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming content. I'll be posting many more short tips videos like this, many more gear reviews, and many more full tutorials to help you improve your tech craft. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.